so uh, this sperm cell should penetrate the cumulus ophorus first and the corona radiata, then it will reach the zona pellucida. It should interact with it and uh, attach to, uh, will penetrate and it will attach to the zona pellucida and uh, will attach to it and will penetrate it to reach the oocyte. And then at the level of the oocyte, they will fuse with the oocyte membrane, which is here. Okay, so the, uh, the steps, the first step of the fertilization is the penetration of the cumulus ophorus and the corona radiata cells. Then the interaction of the sperm cell with the sona pellucida and its penetration also. And the last step, uh, the fusion with the uh, uh, oocyte or the egg membrane. Okay, uh, the fusion of the sperm cell with this uh, oocyte membrane. Okay, now uh, the how. Uh, you know, how those sperm cells can uh, penetrate through uh, the cumulus ophorus and the corona radiata cells. In fact, those cumulus ophorus and those granulosa cells, uh, they have an extracellular matrix between them. And this is a loose, you know, the extracellular matrix between them is a loose extracellular matrix uh, containing um, hyaluronic acid. Uh, okay, so, and the sperm cell membrane uh, contains the hyaluronidase, this enzyme that hydrolyze, uh, hydrolyzes the hyaluronic acid, okay? So the sperm cells on their membrane, they have this hyaluron hyaluronidase uh, enzyme, and the extracellular matrix between the granulosa cell is, um, contain uh, hyaluronic acid. So now when those uh, sperm cell will reach the uh, granulosa cells of the cumulus ophorus and the corona radiata, uh, the hyaluron, the hyaluron, excuse me, the hyaluronidase enzyme on the surface of the sperm cell will digest the hyaluronic acid present, the major component of the extracellular matrix. And by digesting this extracellular matrix, they will um, be, uh, they can um, disperse those cells. So those cells will be disconnected. They will be dispersed. And that's how the sperm cells will reach the zona pellucida. Now, once they reach the zona pellucida, um, uh, this layer, the zona pellucida, as we have explained in the earlier, uh, in the last chapter, it is uh, composed from glycoprotein, is a matrix composed from glycoproteins, uh, and this matrix surrounds the oocyte. So this is a glycoprotein proteinaceous matrix surrounding the oocyte. And it is composed from several glycoproteins from four types of glycoproteins, the ZP1, the zona pellucida one, two, three, and four. So we have four types of glycoproteins, the zona pellucida one, the zona pellucida two, the ZP3, and the ZP4 that compose this uh, zona pellucida. Now, when this sperm cell will uh, bind to this zona pellucida, this is the primary fixation. This is what is called the primary fixation. And uh, so uh, in order for the fertilization to occur, we should have a sperm zona pellucida binding. And we should have a binding between the sperm and the zona pellucida. And this binding, this primary binding of the sperm with the zona pellucida is made possible or is uh, facilitated or made possible due to the interaction of the sperm cell with three of those glycoproteins composing the zona pellucida. Uh, uh, and is, uh, this interaction or this uh, binding of the sperm cell to the zona pellucida uh, involves the interaction with the ZP1, 3, and 4. So those three glycoproteins of the zona pellucida are involved in the primary fixation or in the 
binding and يعني in the first binding of the sperm cell to the zona pellucida and notice uh, note that the zp2 is not present among them so the primary fixation we need those three uh, uh, glycoproteins but not the zp2 Uh, so th those three glycoproteins, they are involved in the binding of the sperm cell to the egg, uh, into the zona pellucida, and then the egg. And uh, as a consequence of the binding of those sperm cells to the zona pellucida, uh, glycoproteins, and then to the zona pellucida, we will have an activation of the acrosomal reaction. So um, as a consequence of binding Uh, of the sperm cells to the ZP1, 3, and 4, the, uh, we will have uh, the activation of the acrosomal reaction and we will have the acrosomal exocytosis, which means that the acrosome present directly under the cytoplasmic membrane of the sperm cell uh, will release its content, will let will release its content to the outside, which is called the exocytosis. Okay, so now the, uh, this capacitated sperm that has reached the zona pellucida, after its binding to the ZP1, 3, and 4, and of course this binding is made possible due to the presence of uh, Uh, receptors for each of those glycoproteins on the surface of the sperm cell. We will have this binding, and as a consequence of this binding, we will have the acrosomal reaction and the acrosomal exocytosis that are uh, triggered. And as a consequence of this acrosomal reaction and you know, the release of the acrosomal content, which is the acrosomal exocytosis, Uh, the, as you know, the acrosome contain enzymes. So those enzymes will be released here uh, at the level of the zona pellucida and will digest this zona pellucida and then will allow the um, uh, sperm cell to, uh, to penetrate the zona pellucida and uh, to reach the oocyte. So uh, this acrosomal reaction induced by the primary fixation of the sperm cell to the zona pellucida, uh, the acrosomal reaction will uh, lead to the uh, penetration and to the degradation of the zona pellucida, not the, but will lead to the penetration of the sperm cell uh, and so it can reach the oocyte. Now, uh, we said that in this primary fixation we had the ZP1 three and four, those three glycoproteins that are involved in it that will bind uh, to the uh, sperm cell surface, but the ZP2 will not bind to the cytoplasmic membrane of the uh, sperm cell. The ZP2 uh, does not have a role in the primary binding and in the induction of the acrosomal reaction but it will bind the acrosome reacted spermatozoa and this ZP2 will bind um, uh, in a more uh, ad advanced stage to the spermatozoa and after that this sperm cell will release its uh, and after the acrosomal exocytosis uh, this ZP ZP2 uh, will bind to the uh, spermatozoa So it will not bind to the capacitated sperm cell, but it will bind to the acrosome reacted spermatozoa. And that's why the, uh, the ZP2, the zona pellucida 2 glycoprotein, is considered as a, a secondary sperm, sperm receptor and not um, a primary, and not uh, involved in the primary fixation, but it is considered as a, a secondary sper sperm receptor. Um, now, this zona pellucida is important uh, because, as we said, it plays an important role in uh, species-specific sperm egg binding, because, as we said, the sperm cell uh, will recognize uh, the zona pellucida of the same species. Uh, so this zona pellucida plays an important role in the species-specific sperm egg binding okay 
because this uh, interaction between the sperm cell and the zona pellucida is specific for the species and that uh, makes this zona pellucida uh, have an important role in the species specific recognition between the sperm and the egg and uh, the zona pellucida is important in the induction of the acrosomal reaction. As we said, the binding of the ZP1, 3, and 4 uh, glycoproteins of the zona pellucida to the spermatozoa will induce this acrosomal reaction. So this zona pellucida is important in the induction of the acrosomal reaction. It is important also in the avoidance of the polyspermy, which means that it is important to avoid that more than one sperm cell will fertilize the egg, okay? Um, we will explain how uh, now in the coming slides. And this zona pellucida is, uh, have a role in protecting the embryo uh, in the prior stage to uh, implantation. And before the implantation of the embryo in the uterus, uh, this layer uh, surrounding the oocyte will protect the zygote or you know, the early forming embryo. Okay, so it has a role in protecting the embryo prior uh, to implantation. Now, uh, we, will, we will talk about uh, those uh, two, uh, we'll explain those two uh, characteristics of the zona pellucida. How does it induce the acrosomal reaction? Um, uh, in fact, uh, what happens during the acrosomal reaction? Uh, first of all, you know, during this um, acrosomal action, this acrosome will swell and it will increase in size. It will swell. Uh, the outer acrosomal membrane will fuse with the cytoplasmic membrane that which was destabilized by the increase of the calcium level. Okay. And which was weakened also by the increase by the increase of the calcium levels. So we have a weakened cytoplasmic membrane, and now those um, swelled acro the swelled acrosome can uh, fuse with the plasma membrane at certain points. Okay, and uh, as a consequence of this fusion, we we'll have the fusion here. Now so the binding to the zona pellucida will stimulate the fusion. So before this is before the activation and before the fusion. After the binding to the zona pellucida, we'll have a swelling of the acrosome. Um, this acrosome um, will bind the cytoplasmic uh, membrane as a, uh, of the sperm cell. And uh, then as a, after this binding, the content of this uh, acrosome, which is an acrosomal vesicle, will be uh, released to the outside. Okay? So the content of the acrosomal and the inner acrosomal membrane uh, both become exteriorized in a process called uh, exocytosis. So the content of the acrosomal membrane will be uh, exteriorized and will be released. And after the release of the content, uh, so those membranes will disappear. Okay? The content of don't have any more this outer cytoplasmic membrane and this outer acrosomal membrane. Uh, what will remain is the inner acrosomal membrane that will become exteriorized. Okay, and this process is um, this process of exteriorizing this inner acrosomal membrane and exposing it to the outside, plus the uh, release of the content of this acrosome is called the exocytosis. Okay, so we'll have first acrosome. After the bond of the zona pida and we will, we will switch to the sperm cell, then we will have the uh, release to the zona membrane and the exocytosis. Now, uh, by which factor this acrosomal reaction is induced? So, what are uh, the mechanistic uh, process by which this acrosomal reaction is induced? Uh, in fact, um, during the um, uh, interaction of the sperm cell with the cumulosophorous cell and the corona radiata cells, those cells, uh, as you remember, the granulosa cells secrete progesterone. Okay? So this progesterone will have an important role in the activation of the acrosome reaction and in the sperm exocytosis event, so in this exocytosis event, in the activation of the acrosome reaction, and also the ZP3 and 4 and 1 glycoproteins 
of the uh, zona pellucida. So there's a progesterone, the ZP3, 4, and, and 1 glycoproteins of the zona pellucida uh, have uh, a role in this uh, acrosomal reaction induction. In fact, they will bind the progesterone, the ZP3, 4, and 1, will bind to the plasma membrane of the sperm receptors. Uh, as, uh, for example, you have here the ZP4 that will bind to the, uh, its receptor on the surface of the uh, uh, sperm cell. Okay, this is uh, the receptor of the ZP4 on the surface of the sperm cell. So they will bind to their receptors, and after this binding, we will have an activation of other signalings, like the protein kinase A and protein kinase C. Uh, and those, um, uh, this activation of those enzymes uh, will activate, will lead to the activation of uh, cation channels on the sperm cell membrane. We'll have also the activation of the cation channels like we have seen earlier, uh, the sodium uh, uh, H3O plus channels and the potassium uh, bicarbonate channels. Uh, so we will have uh, activation of the cation channels on the sperm cell membrane and a membrane depolarization. And this depolarization will lead, you know, the, in, the inner charge of the cytoplasmic membrane will become more negative due to the exit of the H plus and the entry of, of the bicarbonate. This will lead to the depolarization and thus will activate uh, calcium channels, the calcium will enter. And we will have an increase of the calcium level inside of the sperm cell. This increase in the um, here we will have, uh, due to the membrane depolarization, activation of the voltage-operated calcium channels. So those are calcium channels that will lead to the entry of the calcium and the increase of the calcium levels. And uh, as a consequence, uh, uh, we will have the consequence of this calcium entry. Uh, we will have... Uh, uh, the fusion at certain points of the sperm cytoplasmic membrane and external acrosomal membrane. So this increase in the calcium level will induce the fusion between uh, here, the acrosome and the cytoplasmic membrane of the sperm cell, and uh, then formation of pores at the level of the uh, surface of the sperm cell, and then the release of the acrosomal enzyme. So it is the interaction of those uh, glycoproteins with their receptors. For example, the ZP4 glycoproteins has a receptor, uh, a tyrosine kinase receptor. And the type of receptors that will bind the ZP4 is tyrosine kinase receptor and this glyco the active A and the C. The ZP3 it binds to a specific receptor to it also on the surface of, of the sperm cell. Okay, and this is a cascade that lead to increase of the calcium left side of cells by the VOC channels. Okay. And then the fusion of the acrosome with the, the cytoplasmic membrane okay, and the release of the content, uh, and then the exocytosis process. So this is how the acrosomal reaction is induced. Uh, now, those sperm uh, penetrate through, uh, now once those uh, sperm cells penetrate through the zona pellucida, and once they have, um, here you have the sperm cell, and the zona pellucida of the oocyte in green and the oocyte in blue. So after the acrosomal reaction, there will be a release of enzymes that, that will digest this uh, zona pellucida, okay? And at and it will digest the zona pellucida, the site of interaction between the sperm cell and the oocyte. So uh, this zona pellucida here will be digested, and thus, uh, and in this way, the sperm cell can reach the uh, cytoplasmic membrane of the oocyte. And when it will reach the cytoplasmic membrane of the oocyte, uh, the sperm cell has receptors also that will recognize uh, or ha has uh, proteins that. Uh, uh, rec will recognize the uh, proteins on the egg surface and on the oocyte, the surface of the oocyte. Okay. Um, so after crossing this, um, I just have to say that we have here, 
the zona pellucida. Then we have a space between the oocyte and the zona pellucida. This space is called the perivitelline space. So after uh, digesting the zona pellucida, the sperm cell will reach the perivitelline space and then we'll reach the oocyte. And uh, we will have also an interaction between proteins on the surface of the sperm cell and on the surface of the oocyte that make the sperm cell bind, recognize and bind this oocyte. So uh, the protein on the surface of the sperm cell that will recognize uh, the egg, the isoma one, is called the isoma one. And the surface, uh, the protein on the surface of the, the oocyte that will bind to the sperm cell, you know, that is responsible for binding to the sperm cell surface, is called the Juno, uh, the Juno protein. So those two proteins, the interaction of those two proteins, the isoma one on the surface of the sperm cell and the Juno. Uh, protein on the surface of the egg cell is important for uh, the gamete recognition and the fusion process. Okay, we should have this interaction between those two proteins to have the fusion, to have the recognition and then the fusion of those two gametes. Um, then formation of the isoma one and the Juno complex provides a direct physical link between the egg and the sperm membranes. So through this physical link, we will have here we have the sperm and the egg, and they are in contact, and they will recognize each other by those proteins. So uh, the uh, formation of this complex between the two meats will create direct physical link between the egg and the sperm cell membrane. Okay, uh, and the isoma one binds the Juno tightly and rapidly to ensure the fusion process. So this contact is important to have the fusion between the sperm cell and the egg. Okay, so after the fusion, what happened? After the direct physical contact, the fusion between the sperm cell and the egg, the Juno on this, this Juno protein on the surface of the egg will be shed uh, as extracellular vesicles. So uh, it will be uh, uh, removed from the surface of the egg and sort of extracellular vesicles. And those extracellular vesicles will uh, be released okay, and they will go and bind the surface of other sperm cells. Okay, so um, they will bind uh, isoma one on incoming acrosoma reacted sperm in the perivitelline space. And in this way, they will act as a sperm sink to stop the spermy. So those shedded Juno proteins in sort of extracellular vesicles. Those extracellular vesicles um, will go and uh, here that are shed here, they will go and, you know, we have many, we have hundreds of sperm cells surrounding the oocyte and trying to fuse with it. Okay, So uh, the oocyte uh, now should prevent that the sperm process. Uh, it should uh, inhibit the fact that more than one sperm cell will fertilize it. That's why the Juno proteins that we shed and sort of attached to the, uh, the surface other sperm fuse cannot be cannot with this oocyte. And the first sperm cell, only the first one who crossed uh, this uh, zona pellucida will reach the oocyte, will bind Juno protein. The other, now the Juno proteins are shed, and the other sperm cells that are crossing the site will be to uh, from around the so Juno and go directly bind to isomo cells that cross the two. And one is not anymore. Isomo one side will be Juno, and the polyspermy. And this is so, in this way, will have uh, what we call uh, by shedding Juno on its surface after the reaction with the first uh, sperm cell, um, the, um, uh, we will have a block of polyspermy. Okay? So after the fusion, we'll have uh, a polyspermy block due to the release of this Juno, the shedding and, uh, of the Juno. And that's what we call the sperm sink. Okay? So, uh, the sperm cells um, in the perivitelline, reaching the perivitelline space, uh, will 
their isomer one will get bound to the Juno, the tethered Juno, and this will create a sperm sink to block the polysperm. Now we have two types of mechanisms uh, involved in the polys uh, in the block of the polyspermia. The first one is the oocyte membrane block, and it is block caused by the oocyte membrane itself, was, uh, called the fast block, and another. Uh, block of the polyspermy caused by the zona pellucida and by the reaction of the zona pellucida. Uh, 